see you there. So, December, the beginning of December, I bought Steve um, a Christmas gift. It's called this uh, MK2 Tactical Survival Walking Stick Trek, Trekking, Hiking Pole, Self-Defense, etc. Um, so playing the commercial that I saw prior to purchasing it, um, this is what I believed I was buying. Um, looks pretty cool, but uh, so then I go pay online for it and I have it shipped here and it takes two months to get here it didn't so i i purchased it online december 10th and then it, thinking i would have it in time for december 25th and i could go drop it off at steve's acreage and um it didn't show up until three days ago february 10th today's now february 13th tomorrow's valentine's day so, uh, and then, you know, after Christmas, all of January, I tried tracking down where it was, and I was actually 100% convinced that it was a fake Facebook ad altogether, and that I had been ripped off, and that nothing was ever going to show up, um, but something did eventually show up, and... It showed up in this little Velcro case here. And uh, this is the entire unit that showed up. Um, just three six inch pieces. And so I'll take it apart here briefly. nothing in there I guess you could hide something in there oh so we have a uh, little screwdriver piece I've never used a screwdriver when camping so I don't foresee ever needing that piece Then we got this knife here, pretty sharp. Okay, well that's something. And then it's got the tungsten like window breaker on the bottom here. But I'll continue. I mean, it's pretty good steel. If I had gotten the remaining, uh, you know, three or four pieces it would have taken to make a full walking stick, I would have much better things to say about it. But, and there was nothing I missed when ordering it. I remember it did give me the option of, um, getting the 64 inch walking stick and this is 
not 64 inches. I think this is more like 18. So, and the whole hassle of like, there's no customer service. There's no people that you can actually talk to. No 1-800 number or anything. So when it comes to dealing with robots, I just don't have the patience. Plus I can't really tell robots how I tr truly feel and they get the point. But anyways, this is the one good part that actually showed up. This is my uh, flint. And this is what I'm going to try. I'm going to uh, take Steve's Christmas gift and I'm going to try it out just to make sure what did arrive, uh, it all works and whatnot. And so, Right, so let's try leaving this in. Um, find something that works before I go to the woods. Is that a whistle? I think there's a whistle on it too. Odd. Look, doesn't that look like the top of a whistle? Let's see if I can use the knife that it comes with. Very sharp. I don't, I actually have a history with knives in the woods and I typically don't bring knives at all because I always end up cutting myself to the point where I ruin the camping trip and I have to leave and go to the hospital. It's happened on se several occasions throughout my life, you know, in my, um, when I was a kid and then even in my adult years, um, I mean, went on this camping trip and I brought wine with a cork in it and I tried sticking the Swiss army knife blade into the cork and then trying to pop the cork out and I ended up jackknifing right on my index finger and then uh, you know everybody had to pack up and take me to the hospital so I generally do not bring now saying that see now I'm worried I'm gonna cut myself but that'll do and I like the fact that it's 
in here too. Keeps, keeps the blade safe from my fingers. So let's grab that fur ball over there. And we shall head to the woods where we can try this out. Now, uh, I've only ever started a fire with a flint before, um, with only materials that I've found from the woods when there's uh, cattails around. And cattails, where are we? Cattails, some people call them cattails, some people call them uh, bulrushes. But these things here, um, images. Can I not expand this picture? So these things here, um, in the winter time when they're dead, you can grab that sausage looking thing and pull it apart. When you pull it apart, it, uh, it's very fluffy. It would make really good uh, pillow stuffing material. But it's also a good uh, fire ignition part. You can, when those sparks, land in the fluff i don't think there's any in the woods that i'm going to so i mean there might be if i can find a marshy area given i find a marshy area there's going to be these guys they're everywhere in north america and and probably elsewhere as well um cattails fluff There we go. Here's a perfect example. So you can see here. That fluff. When you have a spark land in there, it, it's literally like gasoline. If you pick the cattail in the wintertime. Um, it's a... Uh, uh, hydrophobic um, any time of year because this plant typically grows in water and um, like the outer brown husk is hydrophobic the, it can't soak up water so it, it must be carrying kind, some kind of natural um, plant resin oil that keeps it dry um, therefore when you start pulling it apart and get on that, that nice fluffy stuff um, it's bone dry. Get one of these sparks shh, going into that stuff and then have some birch ready, <coughs> paper birch bark, and uh, you'll be set to go. Um, but if I don't find these cattails, I'm just going to be using um, like some paper towels and some rubbing alcohol. So, bummers. Hey, lazy bum, do you want to go for a walkie walk? Okay, up, walkie walk, walkie walk, okay, let's go. Do your stretches. <laughs> Okay, drink. Drink, you need to hydrate. Drink. Good boy, okay, let's go. Let's go. Okay, before we go, I recently have been prepping my vehicle to do a road trip uh, 
to British Columbia. So, I took out all of the seats out of my car and vacuumed and armor all and all that stuff, all the vinyl. So it's all nice and clean. I gave Balmers a stinky puppy soapy bath day. Um, so he doesn't stink the whole trip there. And he smells like roses and daffodils. And so what do I gotta do is hook up my seatbelt configuration for Bulmers. What I did last time was somewhere along the lines of this. So it's mainly just to if I end up having to stop really quickly he's not gonna go through the windshield or smack it no 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 sorry I misled you out out see I padded that and it, he thought it meant come up so it was my fault. But then, I think I can go like that. There. And that's kind of centered. And then this goes on him. Come here. He won't let me put stuff like sweaters, rain jackets, doggy mitts. He won't let me do that stuff. And he doesn't really need it. He's a big dog. As long as, as, long as it's not below minus 25, he doesn't need a wool sweater. Yeah, pretty good. Ha <laughs> ha. 14 in a month, this guy. Unbelievable. For those of you that don't know, this is the same dog from Boondocking. And then see? Perfect. Right? Now you're not going to go through the windshield. And I'll lose you before your turn for 14. Okay, do I have everything? Water, gloves, okay. Let's go. Yeah, you better wake up. You gotta get in shape if we're going to BC. Climbing mountains and stuff. It, it has been since 2015, since he's been to the coast. So 2015, so we're looking at nine years. Whereas he spent the first five years of his life always within an hour's walk of 
the uh, of the coast. Hey. more room. Dum de dum de dum, dum de dum, going for a walkie walk. Me and Balmer's going for a walkie walk. Walkie walkie walk. Nice day. I think it's only like minus five today. We'll check when I'm not driving. But uh, you know where we're going, don't you? Let's take a break from the city in a forest within the city. I've told Steve about this place, Mill Creek Ravine. Lots of places to go stealth camping down here. It is Tuesday, but given it's a nice day in the dead of February 2024, it's probably going to be busy and judging by the parking lot, there's going to be lots of people. So we're going to have to go off trail a bit and I don't think I'm going to get, oh no, it's construction going on. Okay, so maybe we'll go down here to our little secret parking spot. Yeah, we'll have to go off trail to kind of see how this uh, fire flint works. Apologize if I'm repeating myself, but I don't think I'm gonna get a full-fledged fire going um, I didn't bring it bring any food or anything. I really just want to see How this how Steve's Christmas present Works Okay Just take off your seatbelt Or oh, armpit scratch you like an armpit scratch, don't ya? Oh yeah. You ready to go? All good? <laughs> Okay, park. Okay, as long as, long as I stay down below here, next to the river, um, there's not really any signs or anything telling you. In fact, I've gone out of my way looking for the signs, but uh,
people have told me that up atop where the bike path is, the asphalt bike path, you're to keep your dog on a leash there. But everybody says if you want to take your dog off leash, you just bring it down along the river. So. So I'm going to bring one of these rolls of paper towels. And maybe should have brought a roll of toilet paper in case I needed um, it for more reason than one. And we shall go. Maybe I'll bring this leash just in case. Even if he does walk on the ice on the creek, the river is only not even a foot deep in most places, so. But even though it's been really warm, we did have some long cold spells, so. I'm not really worried about the ice today. Okay. Okay, even though the ice is probably safe to walk on, there's lots of human tracks there and uh, coyote tracks coming up the river here. Or maybe dog tracks. And yeah, so probably coyote tracks. Um, I'm still gonna refrain from going on there. Uh, one thing I did with Balmers when he was really young is find a large puddle that was only half a foot deep. And I purposely uh, got him to walk on it and fall through it. So he learns that, okay, ice isn't safe and you're gonna get wet and cold. Um, so in the future, uh, he would know uh, not to really walk on the ice, knock on wood. Um, without there being a risk or without me walking on it first. He, a couple years ago, he did chase a coyote uh, onto the North Saska Saskatchewan River, which is, well, there's work going on here. Um, they're fixing the bridge, so I'm gonna have to reroute where I'm going here. Okay guys, I'm gonna let you go for a minute and come back to ya. Good old Edmontonian construction workers. It doesn't matter what time of year. Like I shut down in the winter doing landscaping cause nothing grows. Um, but these guys up here in Edmonton, they'll, they'll do any, they'll pour concrete in the winter. Anyways catch back with you in a moment okay so the path is closed there and they're working on the bridge that I needed to cross to get over swing over to that way so put him on a leash for a moment and looks like I may have to Cross the small part of the river and I have to make sure I cross where it's easy to get back up um, okay well there's the easiest part to get back up on the other side I don't want to have to climb up that like five six foot wall over there might be better steep hill but I have to keep him in mind too right because 
his back legs because of his hip aren't perfect anymore. He was a mountain goat growing up. Um, you know, I'd set on, set out some days on Vancouver Island and I call it peak fever. And I would pick a mountain and be like, okay, I'm gonna try by midday to be at the top of that mountain. And, you know, he would get, never get too far ahead of me, but a lot of times I would literally be rock climbing and he would have, he would have taken the same route, like up a rock face and uh, be having a nap above me, waiting for me. So, but he can't do stuff like, like this wall over here anymore. And when we come across stuff like this, I have to pick him up and he's 90 pounds and put two, his two back legs on uh, um, my, over my neck, over my shoulders and his two front legs on my left hand side and hold on to his two legs like this around my neck and carry him up the uh, steep hills and places like rock climbing. But I think here is gonna be my spot. Um, ooh, or maybe even, yikes. Not great guys, I'm not very happy about this. Cause it has been warm for a few days, but I played lots of pond hockey growing up. So yeah, I think we're pretty good here. Yeah, we're fine. Um, yeah, we are fine. Woo. Oh, good jump. Okay, off leash time again. We'll go up in there. See if this flint will work. Beautiful. Always glad when I'm able to make it out here. I feel uh, like my brain doesn't operate the way it should when I don't have regular breaks in the woods. Is this copper? can't be. No, I think it's just a aluminum fence post. Interesting. Maybe I could attach Steve's Christmas gift to this and then it'll be a regular sized hiking stick. <laughs> Since they didn't send me Okay Did he get up here? See, he still ceases to amaze me I mean 14 and then they say, say uh, Seven dog years in a year One human year So seven times 14 Is what he's going to be next month. So 14 times seven, that is, <sighs> seven times seven is 49 times two, 98 years old. Which way did he go? Down or up? Up, good boy.
Look at that, eh? I like these guys. They put nice dead logs around the base of the tree. So in case they hit it with a machine or something going down here, they wouldn't damage the tree. I wonder if they work for the city or if they're a private contractor of some kind. I would like to ask because they're doing the kind of work that I like to do in the winter time. I mean, I can't see them out here in minus 35, 40, minus 50, which it did get down to this year, minus 50 degrees Celsius. And then what's today? Only minus three. Feels like minus seven. But that'll be out of the woods in the wind. Cool. Nice all week. I hope Steve is able to get his uh, some camping in. Um. So I'm also, I should remind myself, keep an eye out for paper birch or birch bark. Nice blue sky, not many clouds. So as long as we stay up top here, which is really where I'd like to, if I can, do most of the hiking, either on the side of a big hill or the top of the big hill on the ridge. Because then you can look down into what's below you and uh, have a better chance of sneaking up on uh, wildlife for a camera shot. So those aren't, they, some of them kind of look like birch, but they're not, they're poplar. Cool. Okay, let's keep going if we can. Not really a path there. That looks more like an animal trail than a human trail. Oh, there must be a wild toilet paper tree close by. And that is houses. So I don't want to go there. So it looks like I'm taking the animal trail. I didn't even have to bring those paper towels. I could have just, uh, well, let's make sure it's not used. Doesn't look used already, so. I could have used it to got a fire going. And in all honesty, if it 
had been used and I was in a real emergency situation and needed it to start a fire to keep warm and not die from hypothermia, yeah, I'd have to use it, even though there's somebody else's shit on it. Okay, there's houses everywhere. We're gonna have to, uh, There's gotta be a way to split left here. Oh, it's a nice little area. A little too open for stealth camping with all these houses here. But let's see if there's a way down here. Oh, what are we doing here? Good heavens. Bombers, I don't know uh, that I want to go down there. Come here. Come here. I think this might be a cliff. Come. Better safe than sorry. Yeah, I'm... good heavens. So where do I go? One of those days, you know, I took the below parking lot because to avoid the uh, construction, but actually, if I had parked in the above parking lot and taken that route, I would have surpassed all this. So some days, it doesn't matter what you do, how, try, how hard you try and plan ahead. Life is full of curveballs. So let's go back the way we came. I'm sorry, bud. Get me out of here. So, squirrel? Yeah, I think most likely, most likely squirrel. Or no, those are probably magpie. Let's just do it right here. Why not, eh? I don't have a tripod, so it'll actually work out for the better. I can just set the camera on one of these posts sticking out of the ground. 
Okay. bunch like that. Don't have to uh, go too nuts with preparation because uh, I'm cheating like Steve always does with rubbing alcohol. I think it would be nice to see Steve just take it upon himself to start a fire from scratch. You know, using a bow drill or, uh, you know, a piece of flint like this. I like videos where he's taken out of his element a little bit because his reactions to things are priceless, as we all know. So, I'll have to remember um, the flint end is on the tungsten end and I believe the knife is in this one, the middle one. So I'm putting the sun here. Perfect. Can you not pee on anything please? Thank you. Not that you would, but I guess I could technically keep cookies, dog treats in here, couldn't I? But, see, nothing. Okay, careful, this is sharp. Okay, out, out, out. <laughs> Bombers. <laughs> Out. Let's see if this works. Get out. 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 And one spark hitting rubbing alcohol should be enough. See if I can get it in one strike. Oops. Well, see see what happened there? Like, I don't bring knives to the woods. I went to flint it and it popped out. And then this went like against my leg. Luckily, I wasn't going very hard, but I would have sliced my freaking leg right there. I was that close. It's ridiculous. I have the worst luck. And I'm just stupid about it. So now where did the flint go? Oh, here it is. So, lesson number one with this thing. Don't use it when it's in this stupid little thing. And I think, I'm pretty sure it's a whistle, although, not a very good whistle. So I guess I have to hold on to it like that, which is still better than not having a flint, but okay, one strike.
Huh. I thought for sure with alcohol it would work. Maybe it evaporated already. Well, I was almost cutting myself. <laughs> Ah, got it. Excellent. So if I had found some birch bark, then I would pile it, be piling that on. Is this working? Yeah. And you know, I would be putting on my birch bark and then my small little sticks and then slightly larger sticks, then larger sticks and then eventually pieces of firewood. Excellent. Well, I'm gonna put this knife away before anything else happens. Okay, I know this is supposed to be a whistle. Oh. Look at that. Okay, so now what? supposed to go like that. I think. There we go. Okay. All right. I like this thing a little bit more. So now, at least Steve can get a fire going with it a little easier and call for help if he gets lost stealth camping. <whistles> Loud. Now my ears are ringing a little bit. Um, and if you, if you hear really loud three times, um, that's the whistle blowing call for help. One, two, three. One, two, three. And I mean, if people, other people have been taught that as well. It is strong and it is very light and you can go to Home Depot and get like just go to the section where they have Kang, Kangs like old Kang Kangs for old men or people with hip problems and get a like a rubber cap so it has better grip because this the tungsten point for breaking windows and stuff uh, that's not gonna fare very well as a hiking stick on snow and ice you know or rocks okay so I'll see what I can do because if I give this to Steve, he's, of course, he's going to be nice and be like, oh, thanks, Sticks. That's exactly what he's going to say. Like, here's Steve, happy belated Merry Christmas. And then he's going to go, oh, thanks, Sticks. <laughs> um, I do really good impressions of Steve, by the way. Um, 
So, man, I really dislike the company that I bought this for. Maybe they sell extra pieces at Cabela's where, or Canadian Tire. I'll do some research um, where I can... I don't like online shopping, guys. When I go shopping, I like to be able to physically touch and hold and, and play around with before I buy something. And when I buy something, uh, then I have to worry about porch, uh, porch pirates uh, and never getting it. And then all the extra time spent on the internet doing so at least when you're shopping in person physically with um, humans human cashiers and human customer service uh, so much better and plus you're moving around you're going for a walk you're having an outing as opposed to just s s sitting at home staring at the boob tube so um, We'll do a bit more hiking, and it's just good good to know now that, uh, oh, I almost forgot the flint. Do a bit more hiking. It's a shame that, uh, maybe I'll have to get to the other side. But, yeah, if this thing was actually 64 inches, which is what I clicked on when I ordered it, then it would be pretty cool. I would give it four out of five stars for sure. But, I mean, I guess it's not a survival walking stick. It's a survival baton. And it could do some damage. Like if a bear was charging at you, you probably still wouldn't win. But if you connected nice and hard on the bear's snout, might give you a chance of walking out of there. Okay, dog. You want to go for a further walk? Hasn't been much exercise so far, has it? Alright. Sounds like the construction workers are taking a bit of a lunch break. Okay, you ready? Got everything? Let's go. Do you want to go this way? I don't think we've ever been down this way before. Excuse me. Oh, you're right behind me. You want to go first?
there's my car. Let's see if we can go around this way without going over the ice again. I think so. Well, we found a bridge and we're back at the vehicle. Beautiful little hike considering all the construction and I had to turn the camera off quite a bit because um, there are so many other people on the trails and I don't know how to blur people when I'm editing the videos so I just can't really put I don't know I should ask St Steve what the rules are because if you notice he never really has um, like just everyday people in his videos and if they are he blurs them out the rare o o the rare occasion that he does Good. Okay, so we'll head back home and I've got other stuff to do today. Um, before I leave for BC, I, on my own, I redid my front brake pads on both tires and I am not mechanically minded at all. Um, the end of grade 10 going into grade 11, I had the choice of taking either woodworking, carpentry, or um, the auto mechanic shop. And I chose woodworking. And I kind of regret it, because now I don't know a lot about engines and cars and stuff. But I have a really bad exhaust leak here. And I... Um, a lot of it is seeping into the vehicle and if I'm sleeping in this vehicle a lot which I am going to be on Vancouver Island I need to plug this up so it doesn't get into my sleeping quarters but that'll be another video there that's where my catalytic converter used to be um, anyways okay let's go home Good boy, oh yeah. And you're so cute. There's no way you're gonna be 98 years old. No way, you have hardly any gray hairs. What the hell am I feeding you? Okay, come on, no, we gotta go. Good jump. Okay, it's only a two minute drive home, so we can just do this one here. There you go. So that Mill Creek Ravine, it's all part of the Abington River Valley. And uh, Steve has mentioned before in his videos, and he mentioned to me when I was coming out here for the first time that Edmonton has the largest um, 
urban park in North America. Uh, the Abington River Valley, as it's called. And you could spend weeks on end hiking through it and still not see the entire thing and take all the trails. It's very large. So that Mill Creek Ravine is just one tiny little branch of the river valley park. Okay, I'm hungry. I haven't had breakfast today. Only three coffees, so that's not good. Um, often when Steve and I were filming boondocking, we would, uh, if we could afford it, we'd stop at A&W for breakfast. Uh, I would take A&W over McDonald's or any other place uh, for breakfast any day. Sasika. Sorry? Sasika. Yeah, what's your order? Uh, could I get a mama burger? Mama burger with cheese or without cheese? With cheese, please. Okay. You want to make it a combo? Yes, could I get um, two cream, one sugar, coffee? Uh, you want to make it a combo with fries? Yes, please. Regular coffee? Yes, please. Okay, any cream and sugar to the <coughs> coffee? Oh, and <coughs> one uh, buddy burger? <coughs> buddy with cheese or without cheese? Without <coughs> cheese? Okay. With, without the on, <coughs> onion sauce? Okay. No, <coughs> yeah, just for the dog. Okay, no sauce, right? <coughs> uh, <coughs> No oh. what? Sorry? Oh. It's a buddy burger with no onions and no sauce? No sauce, no onions. Okay. That's everything. Sir? Do you need a bag? Um, yes, please. Okay, to the window, please. Oh, no, just cook was in Korean. Do you want the bread as well with the bun or the coffee? Um, the yes, please. Yeah, yeah, thank you, buddy. That's everything. Yep, and there's fries with that too, right? Yeah, cool. So you want fries with the buddy burger? N no, we, we already got fries there, don't okay, we? Okay, okay, that's everything? Yep. Okay, to the window, please. Shukriya. I got you a buddy bird. Okay. Got you a buddy burger. Fifteen ninety eight. Thank you. Dab it, please. Cool.
My Hindi is not good. My Hindi not good. It was good. It was good. Yeah. Okay. Dhanavad. Good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. No french fries. The french fries are mine. And then the big burger is mine as well. You get the little burger. But after you eat the little burger, you can't be asking me for my burger. Okay? Thank you. Mine. We'll eat when we get home. Okay, well, I think this is probably going to be a pretty boring video, um, but at least I got some dialogue in this time instead of just music and silence with no dialogue. Um, but beautiful day, got some fresh air, and... Um, Steve's Christmas gift isn't horrible, horrible. But we'll see if we can get those spare parts to make it a full hiking stick. And, um, like it was also supposed to come with a paracord, like inside one of those tubes. So I'm missing that. So we'll go to Cabela's and see if uh, I can track down some some of those spare pieces without having to order on the internet okay till then toodaloo thanks guys okay Sit. So how long do you think it'll take him to eat this? I'm guessing he, he could swallow, swallow this whole. So 1.7 seconds. <laughs> there, gone. Magic. <laughs> if you ever need to hide evidence and the evidence is a hamburger you know what to do okay guys cheerio